Okay, we're going to look at trig graphs today and graphing trig graphs and how they are stretched and translated. Let's go ahead and review first of all what happens to our x squared graph if we go ahead and subtract the 2 from the x before we do the squaring. And it moves two units to the right. If you add 2 before you do your squaring, then it moves two units to the left. If we multiply by 2 before we do our squaring, then it gives it a horizontal stretch of 1 half, makes it only half as wide. Where if you multiply by a half, it makes it twice as wide, so it's a horizontal stretch of 2. Basically, if you're going and you're doing something to the x before you do your function of squaring, it kind of does the opposite of what you initially think. Here you would think probably right 2, but it's really left 2. Here you would think it would be twice as wide, but it's really half as wide. Let's take a look at the other two options here. Here we're doing something to our function after we do the squaring, so then it does more or less what you would expect. Here it's going to go 2 up. Here it will go 2 down. Putting a 2 in front makes it twice as tall. Putting a half in front makes it 1 half as tall. These ideas carry over into trig functions. So how do these differ compared to our normal sine function? Well, putting a 2 in front of your function, it's going to make it twice as tall. So it's a vertical stretch of 2. Well, sine normally has an amplitude of 1. Normally goes 1 up and 1 down. Now, and with our vertical stretch of 2, it's going to go 2 up and 2 down, so we would say we'd have an amplitude of 2. It goes 2 units above and 2 units below the horizontal line that cuts it in half. Putting a 1 fourth in front would make it twice as tall, I mean not twice as tall, 1 fourth as tall, so it's a vertical stretch of a fourth. So you'd only go a fourth of a unit up and a fourth of a unit down, so your amplitude is 1 fourth. Here we're putting a 4, 1 fourth in with our x. Remember when you're in with the x, it kind of does the opposite of what you would think. So it's going to be 4 times as wide. So it's a horizontal stretch of 4. Well, we knew before our period for our sine was 2 pi. But if it's a horizontal stretch of 4 times, it's going to be our period will be 4 times that. So 4 times our normal period of 2 pi gives us an 8 pi. You can accomplish that by really taking your normal period of 2 pi and dividing it by your value of b, which is the number in front of x. Your horizontal stretch here is going to be the opposite of what you think. It's going to be a 1 -third. So it's going to make it 1 -third as wide. So instead of having a period being 2 pi, it's really going to be 1 third of that. So it's 2 pi over 3 for your period. Now we're doing some adding. So we know that's going to translate. Here you're adding after your sine function. So that's going to move it up 3. Here you're subtracting after your sine function, so that'll move it down 3. Now once again, here you're doing something to x before you go ahead and apply your sine function. So remember, it kind of does the opposite of what you think, so this would be 4 units to the left, or to the right, I mean. Whenever you're moving a sine or any trig function left or right, it's called a phase shift. So this would be a phase shift of 4 units to the right. This one here would be a phase shift of 2 units to the left. So phase shift 2 units left. When any trig function is written in this form here for sine or cosine, the number in front is referred to as a. The number in front of your x is referred to as b. The number added or subtracted to x 
is referred to as C. The number added or subtracted afterwards is referred to as D. Your amplitude, how far you go above and below that horizontal line that cuts your graph in half, is always the absolute value of the A. Amplitude is always positive, so that's why it's absolute value. If you're looking at a graph, you can easily go ahead and find your amplitude. It's just the maximum value minus the minimum value divided by 2. That's how far you go above and below that horizontal line that cuts your graph in half. D, on the other hand, does a vertical translation. It shifts your graph up or down. It's really the average value of your trig function. Y equaling D would be a horizontal line that would cut your graph in half. So half would be above and half would be below. If you were looking at a graph, and you needed to work backwards to find D, you would take your maximum plus your minimum divided by 2, which is really just your average. Now, our B value here, we know makes it wider or narrower, so it affects the period. So B does not tell you your period directly, but it does affect your period. Your period is really the normal period of your function, which for sine and cosine is 2 pi, divided by the absolute value of b. Or if you were looking at your graph and you had to work backwards to get to b, you take the normal period of your function divided by your period from your graph. Now, I like to use this blue one. I refer to it as your peanut butter equation because it's P times B equals your normal period. For sine and cosine, it's PB equals 2 pi or peanut butter equals 2 pi. Normally, you're going to either know B or your period and then you just plug it in and you're able to solve it for the other one. C is your phase shift. It tells you how far you're shifting it left or right. So let's go ahead and see how does this graph here differ from our normal sine graph. Well, we have a b in front of our x, a number in front of our x, so it's 2, so that affects your period. So let's use our peanut butter equation. We're going to go our period times our b value equals 2 pi. And this is the peanut butter equation, so if you wanted, you could start with p times b is equal to 2 pi. Well, when you go ahead and solve that for your period, you got to divide both sides by 2, and you end up getting pi. Your phase shift. Your phase shift is affected by this. So for this particular problem, we're going to go pi over 2 units to the left. 